So you want to make the big bucks. Well, I can't really tell you how to do that, but I can tell you what I did to make good money. You know, I'm not a millionaire, but I have gotten to the point of making 55 bucks an hour, which is equates to like $115,000 a year. And that's as a software engineer, remote, uh, just meaning from home. And I just want to tell you how I did that because I was recently a save a lot cashier just a few years ago. And um, I don't know, maybe there's some save a lot cashiers out there that want to make more money. So let's let's just get into it. So a few years ago, I was a working at save a lot as a cashier right before college, 725 an hour. And then I went into college. I'll just give you a quick rundown of what everything I did. Senior year, I decided to code, took some code academy, didn't know that much. Freshman year, went into coding, couldn't get an in internship or a job. So I just did like promotional stuff for sporting events. Then the summer, I worked at a beer warehouse. I, were, I painted houses. I built projects though. And then I came back, I got a tutoring job because I was on the Dean's list the whole first year. So I was tutoring the first semester of my sophomore year. Then I applied to internships, got my first internship in New York, went there, that was a good internship. So I came back, I found a mentor, uh, did consulting for a bit, used all that experience. I got a research position from all that. Then I have a ton of experience at that point. Uh, my senior year I came back and I kind of killed it then. So I just uh, got a few jobs. I worked at multiple startups. Uh, big company too and I also started my own company so after all of that my salary was increasing throughout all of it like you know from 7 to 10 to 12 to 15 to 20 to 30 and uh, now I got to the point after just the time I was in college to getting 55 bucks an hour I'm to explain I don't want to go into too much detail for each position maybe I could do that in a different video but I just wanted to explain like that was kind of my path to doing it uh, I was worrying about grades when I first entered college mostly, and then I stopped and more so worried about industry and internships and stuff like that. So I'm making this video just for a couple reasons though, because like, first of all, I want you guys to know I have experience. Like I just said that I worked at like seven or eight different companies, uh, software engineering and stuff. And I want you to know that I'm like reputable, at least somewhat reputable um, source for this information, right? Like I passed a bunch of algorithm tests and like I'm, I feel comfortable in my skill level. I feel like a desirable candidate. Um, um, another reason I'm making this video is just because I think people are interested in paths that people take to get to where they are. So I wanted to just tell you I did a ton of internships. It was a lot of hard work. I was building projects, internships, tutoring. I literally did startup, research, consulting. I started my own company. I did like every single possible field I that I could have. Um almost so but yeah i mean i guess um like it's just my personal path it's not something you can just go out and replicate exactly like that would be insane of you to do it's just letting you know like i've seen it's like i said in another video this is all skill based if you get a cs degree i've gone to school with people and they graduate and they end up getting jobs making 50 or sixty thousand dollars a year Whereas I'm making a six figure salary and the difference is they didn't try and do all these internships like they didn't do any internships. And when you kind of coast through school and you don't really try that hard or like go and do internships like you don't really know about the industry. So it's hard for you to navigate it because I know now know how to navigate the industry. It's hard for you to find jobs. It's hard for you to you don't have the technical skill to, you know, even just talk on the phone interview. You probably don't have the algorithm data structure skills. Um, so you have to try at some point to become skilled if you want to make these six figure tech salaries. There's people a lot better than me that I've worked with. There's people that are a lot worse than me. And I felt very comfortable in myself. Like I would do hackathons my senior year and the groups I would be with, I would feel like I was at the top. Uh, I would be at the top tier of engineers my age, I felt like. So if you feel good with people your age or in your category, like don't compare yourself to like senior engineers or anything like that, but maybe compare yourself to fellow classmates, 
compare yourself to other people your age and see like where you stack up against them. And I, when I worked with other, pe other people, I felt pretty confident in myself. At a certain point, I felt, like I said, a desirable candidate. And when you feel like that, you probably are. And like I said, this isn't the only path. Like I see people that just only do school, right? They get straight A's in school. And if you're just studying in the whole time and you don't do internships, I see people that are just teaching assistants and they don't do internships and then they come out and they're making more money than me. Like they're getting really high offers because they know the material, they read the textbooks and all that stuff. That's one thing. It really is all just, like I said, skill-based. You're gonna be getting tested if you know your stuff, if you got the GitHub, you know, stars and all the green boxes and stuff like that. Like, you know, companies like that, so. Now, the thing I see people getting held back by, there's a few things, is um, laziness is a major one. People don't try at all. They just think, oh, I'm gonna get a CS degree, I apply, and then I get hired. Eh, yeah, good luck with that. Um, another thing is, I see people get depressed and get anxiety in computer science a lot because it's so stressful. That's not really anything I can blame anyone for. That just kind of sucks and it's something you have to work through and maybe you have to consider switching out of computer science. View. A lot of people go from computer science to information sciences in some cases just because it might be a little bit less stressful. And then I think another one isn't laziness or depression. And this one's kind of a positive one. It's not really negative, it's um, it's settling. So like I've seen people get, you know, they do an internship, they like the people they work with, and then they, maybe it's only $50,000 a year, maybe it's not that much money, but they are comfortable, they can survive on that salary, they like the people they work with, and they like what they do. So they just settle, they don't want to achieve more. They're just like, this is fine, I'm comfortable. So if you get comfortable, like that's not anything bad. Like that's fine. Like, so yeah, I guess that's just a video knowing a little bit more about me. Um, let me know if you guys want me to go more deep into my background, I guess. So if you're a cashier at Save Lot right now, I feel your pain. I worked there for a year and there is hope. <laughs>